Hey, it's Jordan with Status Coup. I might have to replace the flag behind me because, oh, Canada, where I actually have family in, uh, Canada might be getting into uh, the massive auto worker strike coming up, uh, more specifically 18,000 Canadian workers that work for uh, the big three auto makers. Uh, let me show you this because the timing really could not be better. Uh, Canada's Unifor joins UAW in authorizing Detroit three strikes. Uh, members of Unifor, the union representing auto workers in Canada, have voted to authorize strikes against Ford Motor Company, General Motors, and Stellantis if agreements on a new contract aren't reached next month. Uh, their strike authorization votes were even higher than in the United States. Uh, Unifor members voted nearly 99% in favor at Ford to go on strike, 99% at General Motors, and over 98%, more than 98% at Stellantis. Uh, Unifor's collective bargain of agreements with the automakers expire uh, at 1159 September 18th. So basically, uh, they could be on strike September 19th. And uh, in America, the strikes would begin in September 15th. So you're talking. Uh, in the United States, 150,000 workers potentially on strike uh, in 16 days. And then uh, across the border, not far away, uh, an additional 18,000 just a few days after that. Uh, Canadian, quote, Canadian auto workers have sent a strong message to D3 automakers that they are united behind our bargaining committees in an effort to improve pensions, increase wages, and secure good union jobs in the electric vehicle future. Unifor President Lana Payne said in a statement, our bargaining team are set to resume negotiations with the unwavering support of Unifor members across the auto sector. <clears throat> Make no mistake, our union is fully prepared to take any and all necessary actions to achieve our collective bargaining objectives. And uh, by the way, Unifor uh, represents over 300,000 workers in Canada. So even though the auto industry end of it is about 18,000, uh, you would presume they'd be getting support from other uh, sectors uh, and Unifor uh, workers. And Canada, pretty much, you know, carbon copy of the United Corporations of America in terms of neoliberalism. Uh, obviously, big difference being, uh, you know, healthcare, among other social benefits, but in terms of the economy, uh, massive inequality there, just like here, and workers being screwed, just like here. Uh, let's continue on. Uh, Canadian auto workers, uh, oh, I just read that. Uh, the union, which started bargaining with the companies earlier this month, is resuming no negotiations after pausing to hold the strike authorization vote. Unifor represents about 18,000 workers at the Detroit auto companies. Uh, Unifor's strike authorization comes days after UAW uh, in America, voting overwhelmingly uh, to go on strike if needed. A uh, little bit more about uh, the Canadian end here. Uh, the Canadian operations of the Detroit Three are much smaller than their U.S. operations, obviously. Um, Unifor President Lana Payne noted that Ford's Windsor, Ontario engine plant, which her union represents, builds engines for some of the company's most profitable trucks, Unifor's choice could be a boost for Ford, giving the automaker an opportunity to tailor terms of the agreement to its advantage. Uh, that is in reference to, uh, in Canada, uh, the Unifor uh, union might specifically target Ford in terms of its strike. Uh, you could kind of do it both ways. You Most of the time, they go after one uh, company uh, and basically go one by one. Uh, so in 2019, uh, the UAW went on strike against GM. Now we're hearing uh, it's very likely that the strategy is to go on strike against all three, four GM and Stellantis at one time in America. Uh, and in Canada, it seems, we don't know yet, that they might be only targeting Ford. And if they don't get the contract they want, then uh, after a little bit of striking specifically against Ford, then going on strike against Stellantis and GM. But this is what I'm talking about, baby, international solidarity. Uh, and it would be great. It would be amazing because obviously the media focus would be here in America. But, you know, you got the bridge to Canada. It's not far. Hey, maybe I'll even bring my passport uh, when I go cover this in Detroit. If you will help fund us to do it, hint, hint, 
sign up to become a status coup member for as low as five dollars a month today that's how we go on the road and cover these stories on the picket lines in the trenches unlike the rest of the masses who sit in their studio pontificating uh but listen 16 days for uh united auto workers in america then you would have about what 19 20 days uh potential strike in canada i see no reason to think they won't also go on strike in canada uh, here in America, you got United Auto Workers already uh, doing practice pickets. Uh, this is a post from UAW International. The big three have made massive profits for more than a decade. But while CEOs get rich, UAW members got left behind. By the way, uh, GM um, GM um, CEO Mary Barra, the UAW put out, uh, has made $200 million, $200 million in the last three years. So you're definitely going to be seeing that on strike signs. Uh, our message to the big three is simple. Record profits mean record contracts. Let's show the companies we mean business. And now they are setting up practice pickets uh, in the next week or two before an actual strike. We saw UPS do that quite successfully before reaching uh, their agreement, which they have uh, overwhelmingly passed. And that contract will go into effect for UPS soon. Uh, the practice picket for decades, unions across the country have used this tactic because it's simple, fun, and sends a clear message to the boss. Uh, the Teamsters were the most recent union to use practice pickets to win a strong contract. Now it's your turn, uh, and they give uh, training uh, information there. Uh, I will put the link uh, in uh, the description uh, if you're a UAW member watching and want to know uh, how you get can get involved in practice pickets. I wanted to show you this because I think it was really uh informative, putting kind of human face on this, which obviously we will do uh, when we are on the ground. But this is from Labor Notes, who does great work on labor, obviously. Uh, they went to Kentucky or spoke with workers, uh, UAW workers in Kentucky, walking like zombies. James White works 10-hour shifts at Ford's truck plant, putting, a le putting leaf springs on the beds of the full-size trucks. The job is so crueling, grueling, he canceled his gym membership Quote, I'm basically putting the big springs that are the payload for the back of the trucks, he said. They're really heavy pieces of steel, and I lift them all day. Luckily, I have a hoist. He says the hoist lifts the steel, but it doesn't push or pull it. That's where the momentum of human brawn comes in. They're making our trucks really strong. The heavy work means lots of injuries. That's why we want our health care to improve, White said. He's especially concerned about the older workers because the physical demands of the jobs have broken down their bodies. When workers leave the assembly line at shift change, he says they look like the people in Michael Jackson's thriller video. People are walking like zombies. They're in pain. They're sore. They're tired. Quote, some of the injuries they get are life altering, White said. And the company's response is to tell them to take pain pills. You can't live off pain pills which is pretty informative. I don't know any of you uh, have seain it recently, but there's a new Netflix show, Painkillers. Uh, it's really good if uh, you have time to watch it, uh, about the growth of um, OxyContin from Purdue Pharma, uh, the Sackler family, Greed, uh, and basically the scam and big pharma cartel that hooked workers like this who are getting injured on the job and are having their bodies broken down so that Mary Barra could make $200 million uh, over three or four years. Uh, and, you know, capitalism meets uh, health exploitation and greed. So break these bodies down so that uh, the CEOs, the executives, the shareholders can steal their money, uh, the fruits of their labor, and then get them hooked on pain pills to help the pharmaceutical industry. That's basically what's going on. Of course, not just the auto workers. You got Amazon workers, you know, workers uh, anywhere. It's grueling work uh, if you're dealing with your hands, heavy equipment, et cetera, et cetera, being on your feet, um, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12 hours a day, not to mention in so many of these areas, um, you know, hot conditions in warehouses. Just saw another headline about a UPS worker who tragically died on the job due to excessive heat. Uh, continuing from this uh, Labor Notes article, uh, workers say they've given up much over the years to help the auto companies make record profits. Uh, White says he isn't willing to give up so much of his time. He switched from night to day shifts to tuck his daughter in at night, but it's still not enough. 
Quote, I came in at 6 a.m. My kids get home from daycare about 6 p.m. If she's going to bed at 9, then I go off at 5.30, 6 p.m. I feed her dinner, talk to her a little bit. That's not enough. I have three hours of daylight. Quote, we should have eight hours of work, eight hours of recreation, and eight hours of sleep. I can't tell you the last time I got eight hours of sleep. I average about four and a half hours. I mean, this is modern day economic slavery. What's going on? And the companies could put out bullshit talking points about, you know, their pay and their benefits or industry leaders. A, they're not. When you factor in how much money UAW and auto workers have had to give back over the last decade in wages, they're, they're paying more into their health care. Obviously, uh, their pensions have been raided uh, by Wall Street and these big three automakers. Uh, but there's no price on family. There's, I mean, it's priceless. And these workers are working insane hours to build these trucks. It is absolutely insane. But when UAW President Sean Fain demands the wages that they deserve, the wages that they have earned, the wages that are being stolen from them by the greedy CEOs and the shareholders and the stock buybacks and all that, let's remind you uh, what the media says about, oh, the scary communist, communistic talk. It's just, it's just not a great market right here. Uh, and a lot of people worried about the strike, the Ford GM yes, Stellantis strike. I assume you, you heard the UAW's president line about basically we're not going to take. Yeah, I mean. And now, now, and now we have some dates on authorization votes. Yeah, having been a union member uh, who helped lead a Wildcat strike, well, of course, which I was immediately fired, uh, I would stress that, I mean, it was a different year. I would stress that there used to be, we forget, in the 70s there were these union moves where we really went hard and we boycotted J.P. Stevens and the result was we put J.P. Stevens out of business. This guy is like when I was, uh, in, a, was in my union. Where it was united, the people never be defeated. And there was a Trotsky-like element that we believe that the people, the, the people should own the yes. companies. This guy has got that Trotsky-like feel. Yeah. You know, Ed Yardeni looked at what happened in the 70s because union membership was so high. Yes. All these colas would react to, say, energy, but that's not the case today. No. If you look at union membership. Look, I got to tell you that this guy is a throwback to the days when you were trying to figure out how much money you had in your strike fund to see whether you could outlast the companies. I know Jim Farley's beside himself, uh, uh, CEO of Ford. Uh, I don't think people are ready for this. Uh, this is not, well, the writer's strike is pretty pretty strong, but I, I think this man doesn't care whether uh, they shut down the autos for months. It's going to be a death match, claymation death match between Sean Fain I mean, and, and the, the unions. Now, Mary Barr is one one tough person. But if you go and look over her conference call, she dismisses the union entirely as being an issue. Farley doesn't feel that way. And Stellantis, obviously, when they when they, when they, they ripped up Stellantis, when Fain ripped up yes. Stellantis' offer, yes. that felt very much like the way that the UAW used to be, which is that we're going to target somebody and we're going to wipe them out if we have to. They, they want... They want to find, they want the unions, they want, unions want to get rid of the 401k and IRN. Right, right. Yep, well, we're less than a month away from Trotsky. Communism. 16 days, 16 days, and now, oh, Canada. This is going to be a beautiful thing. I humbly, humbly ask you, support us so we could be on the ground. For as long as it takes covering the picket lines.